Be'ezat Hashem, Na'ase V'Natzliach. I'd like to welcome everyone to Ironside Lunch and Learn. And this week's parasha is Parashat Vayeshev. This week's parasha, we get introduced to Yosef. Very interesting uh, figure in Jewish history. It begins with the pasuk that says, Vayeshev Yaakov Ve'eretz Megoye Aviv Ve'eretz Kenan. And then it moves on to Ele Toldot Yaakov, Yosef, Ben Shvai Seshana Hayar Ore Techav, Batson, Vehu Nar, Ed Bene Bilha, Vebene Zilpa Neshe Avi, Vave Yosef Edi Batam Rahe Lavihem. I read the whole Pasuk because just so you know, it's not good to read a Pasuk and not finish it. When you start a Pasuk, you have to finish it. Even though I just wanted to zone in on a few words, you should know when you read a Pasuk, read it from beginning to end, because most of the time, it's especially when it's mentioning Hashem's name. Ele toldot Yaakov. These are the offsprings of Yaakov. Yosef ben Shvai Seshana. And then it says Yosef is 17 years old. Few questions right off the bat. If you look at the spelling of toldot, it's missing a vav. It's taf lamed dalet vav taf. The vav is missing. And the second thing is, it goes straight from Ele toldot Yaakov. This is the offspring of Yaakov. Instead of giving us the rundown of all his children, Yosef. Yosef is the first one that's mentioned, and they give us his age. Okay. Now, this vav that's missing the word toldot is also a hint. It's hinting us that in this parasha, there's going to be somebody missing from his toldot. Somebody is going to be missing from Yosef's offspring. And who's going to, I'm sorry, from Yaakov's offspring, and who's going to be the one that's missing? It's Yosef. Yosef is going to be thrown into a pit and abducted, and later on sold as a slave in Egypt. So the missing Vav is to let us know that one of his children, one of Yaakov's kids, is going to be missing in this week's parasha. Vav, you should also know, you know, the more we learn about the Hebrew alphabet, the more you know the deeper secrets. Vav corresponds to the Yesod. Uh, the Yesod has to deal, is dealing with the Brit. So the Mishnah. Go ahead, continue. And I think there are a few others that I heard this week. I heard a lot of sixes. About Vavs? About Vavs, yeah. So th- this particular Vav is corresponding to the Yesod. And the Yesod, we know that there is one person that is connected to that. Yosef HaTzadik. Yosef HaTzadik was known for protecting his Yesod. He's the one uh, figure in Jewish history that we can turn to, that this was a holy man when it came to that. And we can all strive to be like him when it comes to anything that has to do with the Brit and with the Yesod. So that Vav, that missing Vav is also corresponding to him. Yosef is mentioned right after, as is the offspring. Why? Even though he was not the Bechor, he was the most important. He was the most important of all the children of Yaakov. Later on, in a few more parashiot, we're going to see his importance. He's going to be the viceroy of Egypt. He's going to be a ruler. He's going to be a mashber. He's going to have control of food and money and, and, and power. And later on, he's the one that's going to bail out his entire family. He's got power, and he also has the kedusha. And Yaakov noticed that, uh, and that's why the Torah mentions El Todot Yaakov. Yosef is the first one that they mention. Now, the age is very interesting. Him being seventeen years old, what does that matter if we know his age? Well, the fact that he was seventeen is first to allude to us that up until the three years old, he was considered a baby, a toddler. But from the age of three till the age of 17, which is a total of 14 years, he studied with his father. He studied with his father, Torah. What do we know about his father, Yaakov? It says over there in the the next few Pesukim, Yisrael, Ohevet Yosef, Israel is Yaakov's name from last week's parasha. We know that he gained the name of Israel because he fought with the angel. He got uh, the substitute of Israel over Yaakov. Yisrael, Ohevet Yosef. 
מכל בניו, כי בן זקונים הוא. He loved Yosef out of all his children, כי בן זקונים. Here too, it's a little bit cryptic, because he's not בן זקונים. The smallest one is בן ימין. בן זקונים means it's the, 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 the baby. He's not the baby, he's the one before the baby. So why did they call him בן זקונים? Here too is something very interesting. Here too there's missing a vav. Over here, if you read it, it, does, it's miss, it says Zayn Kuf Nun Yud Mem. It doesn't, it's missing the Vav again. It's almost written like Zekanim. Why Ben Zekunim without a Vav? Here, in order to get the secret, is because the numerical value of Zekunim without a Vav is 207. 207 is also the gematria of the word Raz. Raz is a secret, a Torah secret. So let's read that again, but substitute the word Raz in there. V'Yisrael oheved Yosef mikovanav ki ben zekunim, ben Raz. He's the son of all the secrets. I handed over to him all the Torah secrets. It's to hint to, 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 hint to us that the missing Vav is corresponding to the Torah that was given to him at that time. Now, Yaakov is also known for Yoshev Ohalim. Meaning, he's not Yoshev Ohel Echad. He's not sitting in one tent. He's sitting in Ohalim, plural. Two tents. What were the two tents? Well, well, the first tent was of his forefathers. He studied Torah with Abraham and Yitzchak. He learned their Torah. Later on in last week's parasha, what did we hear? That he went to Shem and Ever's yeshiva. And how long did he stay there? 14 years. So Yoshev Ohalim, he had two types of Torah. He had that super pure holy Torah from our forefathers. And he had that Shem Ve'ever, that should you be in an environment that is toxic, that is poisonous, that is crooked, you have the Torah and have to be a proper Jew there as well. Now, Yosef was part of an elite club. He was part of the Ushpizin. What's Ushpizin? In the, in the, in the holiday of Sukkot, we sit in the sukkah, and every day we invite a different Torah figure, a different tzaddik to be with us. Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Aaron, Moshe, Yosef, David HaMelech. Those are the seven ushpizim that we have. And each day, it corresponds to the energy that's available that day through that ushpizim. Guess what number Ushpizin is Yosef? Six. He's the sixth. There's that Vav again. He's the sixth Ushpizin. Now keep in mind, this is a very unique club. You can't get into the Ushpizin club unless you have something very unique to offer it. Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, these are our forefathers. Aharon, Moshe, <laughs> Aharon, Kohen Gadol, first Kohen Gadol ever. Moshe, the, and Moshe, Rabenu. Yosef, he's right in there. He's right in there. David, Mashiach. Look at this club. They said that Yosef was worthy to be an Av. He was worthy to be another father, another patriarch. But later on we'll see how things turned, turned in a different direction. As a matter of fact, how was, he, how, how was he supposed to, how did he have the potential to be another Av? Well, let's go back to last week. Uh, Yaakov wants to marry Rachel. And the night of the wedding, he gets switched into Leah. That night, Yaakov is saying, I'm going to be with Rachel. And I'm giving all the kavanah that this is the first time that I'm going to be with my wife. And it's going to be the offspring of my child. My child's going to be the continuation of me. He's going to be a tzaddik. He's going to be a sod olam. He's going to be all these things. He had all these kavanot. Keep in mind, tzaddikim walk into the bedroom different from the way other people walk into the bedroom. It's in Kedushat Tahara. So here he is. Having all the kavanot to bring Yosef into the world. He wakes up in the morning. It's Leah. That's not what he planned. That's not what he expected. What happens from there? Leah gets her firstborn. The kavanot that Yaakov did were on Yosef. So they didn't continue on to Reuven. But his name, Reuven, says it all. What's Reuven? 
Reuven is Reu Ben. Look, it's a boy. Why is it called Reu Ben? Because it's no more Av. There's no more fathers. Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, those are going to be the fathers. From this point on, Banim. That's what they're called, Bnei Yisrael. That's why Yosef had the opportunity to be in Av. But since there was a switcheroo, what happened? Reu Ben. From here, Banim. Now, Yaakov and Yosef had a very interesting life. They had a lot of hardships. Yaakov, we spoke about it last week. He had Esav, Lavan, Esav again. He had the problem with Dina, his daughter of, of, of Shechem, being raped, being kidnapped. Later on, the death of Rachel on the roadside. Later on, his sons, when they go back to Egypt in the free parish York from now, Yosef is going to hold one brother and another one. Then later on, he's going to ask him for Binyamin, the last boy he had and the only boy left from Rachel, his beloved wife. He was holding on. I can't let him go. He had a lot of hardships. He had a hard life. When he faced Paro, Paro tells him, how old are you? You look tired and, and worn out. We talk about it when that parasha comes. He had a tough life. Yosef also didn't have it easy. He was Sanui. He was hated by his brothers. Think about it. Imagine having such a large family. I mean, they were a big clan. And being the one that's being hated. Imagine walking around the house. They sold him. They threw him in a pit. He got... He got... Uh, he got... Uh, Picked up by, uh, by Midianim and Ishmaelim. Got sold as a slave, as an Evid in, in Mitzrayim. He had no family. He's lonely for many, many years. He was challenged by Potiphar's wife. Good trivia question. What's Potiphar's wife's name? Good one. You could ask this on the Shabbat table. Zulika. Her name was Zulika. Sometimes in the Moroccan household you might hear Shulika. Zulika. <laughs> Very close to it though. Zulika. Later on he was in prison. After he was in Potiphar's house working as a slave, he got thrown into jail. And after many, many different trials and tribulations, eventually Hashem took him out of jail, made him the viceroy of Egypt, was second in command to the king. But before it got to that, and he was the one that set up the Geulah for said, but before all that, he had a very hard life. To take a deeper look into his life of Yosef at Sadiq, and keep in mind, how many people do we know in the Jewish lexicon of, of Tzadikim and Tzadikot and uh, all these different rabbis and all these different kings and leaders and, and all these Jew figures in our, in, in our Torah? How many get the title of Tzadik? Not too many. Not too many. Yosef is always known as Yosef at Sadiq. However, before, before we get into his life, let's find out a little bit how he came to be alive. He had a very unique life before his life started. Hazal tell us a very interesting story. They say that Leah already had six boys. Zilpa and Bilha, the maids, already had two and two. Okay? Six plus two and two, that makes ten. Everybody knows that Yaakov is supposed to have twelve tribes. Right? Rachel has zero. Leah is pregnant. She's ready to have her numbers, her seventh child. So Leah is looking around. She's like, I have six. These two have two and two. If I have one more boy, that means that my sister, Rachel, is going to have one less child than the maids? I can't have that. Look how much she loved her sister. She went and she prayed that the the, the Valad, the baby that's in her womb right now, should not be a boy. It was supposed to be a boy. It was supposed to be Yosef. 
But because she didn't want to embarrass Rachel, what did she do? She prayed that the sex of the womb or the sex of the baby should change into a female. And it did. And who came? Dina. The seventh pregnancy of Leah was Dina. Now eventually Rachel got pregnant and she had Yosef. But something that's very interesting. So this story of the Shimon and Levi, how old was she? In, this, in the story of the Shimon and Levi. They were 13. How was she? Interesting. It said, Na'ara, no hey. You know it's Na'ara, no hey? That's usually a, a girl that doesn't show signs. The Gemara says, what's a girl that doesn't show signs? One that still that did not have her menstrual cycle yet and doesn't have two hairs to show. So she was raised as a nine. Yeah. Again, you know, the, you could also say that uh, Rachel, she was three years old. Also says over there, she, was, she had a maya naked. She had her, her, her wet nurse with her. You know, it's different concepts back in the day. We could go to it a little bit deeper. But for this lesson, it says that Yosef, once he was born, he was known for something. What was Yosef known for? It says, it says, El toldot Yaakov, Yosef ben Shvaisa Shana, one, you know, if you understand a little bit of Hebrew, something stands out over here that doesn't make sense. What does that mean? So Rashi tells us, He would do the things that girls do. He used to take his curls and make it curly. He used to fix his eyes. He used to beautify himself. He used to do his hair. Now, later on, you'll see, not later on, in Sefer Tehillim, something is interesting. Yosef, at one point, got the letter Hey added to his name. We know that a Hey is a good segula for what? For a girl. Right? Sarai became Sarah. Avram became Avraham. It's like when Hashem gives you a blessing, He adds a hey in your name. Yosef also got a hey. Edut be Yehosef Samo. If you read Tehillim, one of the chapters says, Edut be Yehosef Samo. Why did they put that extra hey over there? The deep, 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 deep secret of that hey is Yosef was supposed to be Dinah. And because that whole switcheroo happened because Leah didn't want that pregnancy, he still had some tendencies over there to beautify himself like a ne'ara. That's why it's Bi Yosef, besides the bracha. Very, very interesting of how he came about. However, Dina, which is the other side of the story, this other side of this pregnancy, has another interesting story. Dina had a very hard life. Very, very hard life. Think about it. She got kidnapped. She was taken and defiled by, by uh, Shechem. Later on, she was uh, held captive. She had an unwanted pregnancy. She kept the baby. She had to deal with a baby that has no father. Nobody wanted to marry her. As a matter of fact, before she left Shechem, she's like, I'm not going back home until somebody marries me. And her own brother Shimon married her in order for her not to be embarrassed. And she had a very tough life. And you say to yourself, why Dina? You're Yaakov's daughter. Why would you have such a tough life? So this, you know, for a girl that's been raped, kidnapped, uh, has a daughter out of wedlock, social reclusion, all these things, there has to be a deeper story behind it. This is not just out of nowhere. 
So Chazal tell us, and this is I heard from Rabbi Meir Eliyahu, very interesting. He says, Dina is the Gilgul, the reincarnation of Abraham's mother, whose name is Amtalia Bat Karnavo. Now, why would Dina be the Gilgul of Abraham's mother? Because Abraham's mother had, she conceived Abraham when she was in Nida. Because, meaning she was during her menstrual cycle. So because she was in Nida, her tikkun was Dina. And that's why she had to go through all this torment. There was a tikkun for Abraham's mother. By the way, something they should know. There's a big, big, big segula to say Amtalia Bat Karnavo 17 times before you go to a big business meeting. Before you go into some sort of uh, uh, court hearing. Before you go to some sort of uh, something where you're walking into strangers and you want people to like you, stand there with your fingers go, I'm talia bakana vo, I'm talia bakana vo, I'm talia bakana vo. Count it 17 times. It's one of the segulot that's available to us as Jews. You should know that. Dina eventually also became Yosef's mother-in-law. Because the baby that she was carrying who was she? Her name was Osnat. Why did they call her Osnat? Because she was Snua. She was hated. She was hated by her entire family. When she came around, if you think Yosef was Sanu, you should say that he was hated. You should see how they treated her. Because why? She's a symbol of Yaakov's family being defiled by Shechem. She was a symbol of something unholy. She was a symbol of a bad uh, event in the family of Yaakov. They couldn't bear to look at her. So what did they do? They had her sent away. And before she was sent away, Yaakov Avinu created a kamiya for her, a little necklace that says, this is Osnat, the daughter of Dina, from the house of Yaakov. He wrote it, put it on her, and sent her. And later on, where did she go? She went to Mitzrayim, and she was adopted by no other than Potiphar. Potiphar, one of Paro's main uh, servants or main uh, uh, because of Yehudit, we're back. And this Kamiya, and this Kamiya, she left it on her the whole time, and she was adopted by uh, Potiphar, uh, by Potiphar. Now. Yosef happens to be at the same time in Mitzrayim. Listen to this love story. Here's, here's Yosef. He went through all these hardships, like we just said. He got sold as a slave. He got put into jail. He got taken out of jail. Now he's a, a, a servant to Potiphar. And he's one of the best looking guys on the planet. He's in the worst place on the planet. The Mitzrayim is called Ervat Ha'aris. What's Ervat? He says that's the most uh, toxic place that had all the Avodah Zarah, anything with the Arayot, everything was, uh, it was like one of the best, worst societies that you can be in, was Mitzrayim. And he's right there. So everybody's vying for him. All the girls wanted him. I said it many times, they'd be cutting up vegetables, looking at him, and they'd cut their fingers. They'd be peeling potatoes, they'd peel their thumbs. They see him in the street, you think that whole thing of Mardi Gras throwing uh, uh, necklaces? They were throwing on him jewels with their names on it. Yosef, Yosef, recognize me, talk to me. Even his own boss, Potiphar, made advances at him. They said he was Mesuras. They said that he... He had a trophy wife. That's all she was, was a trophy. He was really interested in something else. And he wanted Yosef. So could you imagine what Yosef is surrounded by? And this whole time, he didn't say, you know what? My family left me. My family kicked me out. I don't care about them. I'm going to be the biggest guy over here. I'm going to be, I'm going to be the best looking guy with the best looking girl with the best looking house. I'm going to, be, I'm going to move up in life over here. What do you do? Everything that came out of his mouth, Baruch Hashem, Be'ezat Hashem, still thinking about God, 
knows that everything is for the best, doesn't talk to any girl, doesn't, doesn't do anything, protects himself. He's in his 30s. And all of a sudden, in the middle of all this, in the middle of this, he sees a girl that she throws in him a kamiya, and this one he catches. He opens it up, and what does it say? My name is Osnat. I am the daughter of Dina, and I come from the house of Yaakov. Like, and she lives where? In the house with, with, uh, uh, with the Potiphar. And she ended up being his wife. She ended up being his wife. The one Jew in all of Egypt ended up being there for yourself. In other words, if you're worthy, Hashem will bring you a shiduch to your doorstep. Doesn't matter where you are. If you're worthy, if you're a tzaddik, if you're doing the right thing, if you're doing the right thing, He'll bring it to you to your doorstep. We learn it from Yosef and Osnat. What a beautiful love story. However, this was all an introduction to this. We got a little bit of a feel for Yosef. But what was the one thing that gave Yosef all the success? What's the one thing that Yosef had going for him? What's his schut? What's his merit? What's the, the virtue that he's holding on to that he's being so successful? And the answer is 14 years of Torah learning. Let's look into it. You see, Yosef was in the house of Yaakov 17 years. Three years, we say he was a baby. 14 years, every day, learning Torah with Abba. Because of that, he had the schut to do what? To set up the Geulah. Remember, we're constantly talking about the Geulah, Geulah, that Mashiach is going to come. You know, we already had one Geulah. We had one complete, 100% full Geulah in history. And that's Yitziat Mitzrayim. Every single Nitzot in Mitzrayim was picked up, job done, Hashem took us out. Who set it up? Of course, Kadosh Baruch Hu, with the help of all our patriarchs. But who was the final link in the chain? One of the final links in the chain, let's not take away Aaron and Moshe and all the uh, ones that, uh, that followed, but it was Yosef. That was the viceroy of Egypt that got the power to control the food, that got the power to control the money, that got the power to bring his family over there and set them up and got, gave him all, all on a silver platter. Get ready for the geula. I had a purpose of coming here. I'm not mad that I went to jail. I'm not mad that you threw me in a pit. It was all for a good purpose. Who had that schut? Yosef. Yosef with his 14 years of Torah, withstood the test of Mitzrayim as an environment, and the test of Potiphar's wife. She was special, this is Ulika. She was one of the most beautiful people on earth as well. Loya Haserla. It's very hard to resist her. But she made it hard. Why? She beautified herself uh, on a different level. She would change her clothes three times a day. And you know, this is a girl that lives in a castle. Changing clothes. And it's, an app. it's like when a girl changes from her wedding dress to her second dress. It's a whole to-do. Three times a day. And each time, different perfume. Different oil. Different lotions. Think about it. To take away the oil and the lotions from the morning and start to get new smells, new look, new hair, new outfit. I mean, she put a lot of effort into trying to catch Yosef. She made a lot of advances at Yosef, whether it was in words or looks, to the point that she had everybody leave the castle, leave the home, and she was there by himself. She was there with him by himself, with Yosef alone. Why? She says, if I'm going to get him to be with me, nobody sees. If I don't get him to be with me, I'm going to yell and scream that he tried to hurt me. And since there's no witnesses, they'll have to take my word. She was a snake. However, Yosef did not falter. They say in that particular moment when she made the advance at Yosef, it was very interesting. 
The Yitzhara says, you know what? This is Yosef HaTzadik. It's now or never. It's now or never. It's either I get him now, or I don't get him at all. He took the Yitzhara of the entire Jewish nation and shoved it all into Yosef. Imagine what's standing the Yitzhara of thousands and thousands of millions of people into one person. And he says, fight that. If you're able to fight your Yitzhara of all the Jewish people, you can be called Yosef HaTzadik for generations. And Yosef held on to his desire and to his, uh, uh, and to his you know, evil inclination. They say that he nailed his, no, his toes to the ground tight and he ran. He ran and when he squeezed his ten toes to the ground tight, they say the ten drops came out from his toes. He was also supposed to have 12 tribes. But because those 10 drops came out of him, he ended up just having two kids. Ephraim and Menashe. From this, we also have a segula, by the way. When a person is praying, and he's having foreign thoughts. You know, he's trying to pray to Kadosh Baruch Hu. All of a sudden, the, 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 the TV program from last night is running through his head. Or that image of that girl that he saw on Facebook is running through his mind. And all of a sudden, he's trying to be like in a holy moment. But, you know... He's, he's, and he has tefillin on and he has a foreign thoughts they say do the same thing as yourself nail your toes into the ground and the thought shall pass in about a few seconds it should pass now the pasuk says about this escape of Yosef from uh, from Zulika it says Vayanus Yosef Vayazov Bigdo beyada vayenos veitzeh achutza. Yosef ran away. He left his clothes behind. She ripped the clothes off of him, and he left it behind. Vayenos veitzeh achutza, and he went and he ran away outside. They also say that at that particular moment he saw the face of his father, the face of Yaakov. Which, by the way, Yaakov's face was identical to Yosef as well. So he saw his face. They had like a, an image of his father. And he said, I can't, I can't. My father's a tzaddik. His, his father's a tzaddik. I come from a line of, of tzaddikim. I got to stay strong. I can't give up no matter what I feel right now. And he ran away. And you see that the good home education from his father held strong. If you see that the word that they use, vayanus Yosef, vayanus vayetze, it's a very strange word, vayanus, vayanus. You know? Could just use different terminology, but later on, if you fast forward to Yetziat Mitzrayim, we see it come back again. It says over there in Yetziat Mitzrayim, Tehilim brings this chapter again. It says, "Hayam Ra'a Vayanus." There's a there's, there's a, a pasuk from David Amenech that says that the ocean saw Yosef and it split. In other words, the Jewish people merited merited to the splitting of the sea because of Yosef. Why? The, the, the sea wants to split. All the Jewish people are sitting in front of the sea. So the sea says, I'm not splitting. It says, what do you mean? I made a condition with you in the time of Bereshit that I'm creating you as a, as a creation called Yam, but one day you'll open up to my kids, to my boys. He says, yeah, but... El Rishayim Vel Rishayim. He says the Mitzrim that's uh, going after them are Rishayim, and your children too are Rishayim. Those who are not those who not keeping Torah mitzvot. That's not the condition that we made. I had a point. So what happens? They brought the casket of Yosef, and what happened? The sea split. Why? Yanus Hayam. The Yam will Yanus will split into two. Will run away. The merit of him running away from Potiphar, besides all the greatness that he's given to us, also the sea split because of Yosef. Another thing, for those who pray in the morning and do the Shirat Yam, it says, Listen, Vayar Israel, who is Israel? Israel, we know, is another name for Yaakov. Vayar Israel, Israel was there in the time of the splitting of the sea. He was there, and he's looking. Vayar Israel, 
את היד הגדולה. He says, what's this big hand that they're talking about? He says, no, don't read it, את היד הגדולה. את היוד דלת הגדולה. What's a יוד דלת? יוד דלת is 14. יוד is 10. דלת is 4. Of 14 years. Look at the 14 years of education that I was able to put into Yosef. That above and beyond all the things that he's done up, up, up until now, Yetziat Mitzrayim is to his credit. Vayar Yisrael et hayad ha-gedola. The 14 years of education. Look at the value and how, how it carried on. That it was able to have the merit of Kriyat Yamsuf. By the way, do you know why they call the Yad Yad? The word Yad is called, you know, hand in Hebrew. Is because the Yad has 14 perakim. Look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Because we have 14 perakim, that's why it's called the Yad. The Yad Gedola. Now, looking at this little insight into Yosef and his, edu his education, you can see the importance of Jewish education. And with this, I'll conclude. How many years is elementary school? Typically till eighth grade, that's four years, right? How many years is high school? It's another four years, that makes it 12. What happens after high school? Most kids go where? To yeshiva, to Israel for another year or two, right? That's a total of 14. Yaakov Avinu is telling us now, listen to me. 14 years of education, that's the secret to your child. Eight years of elementary, four years of high school, any way you want to do it, if it's yeshiva, uh, secular, whatever it is, at the end, after that, they need to go to yeshiva for a couple of years, that type of envelope, that 14 year envelope of education, that's what you can, after that, you can send them out to the world and they'll be fine. In Kal Vachomer, if it's a Torah education, you're good. 14 years of Torah learning, the Torah will protect him. And that's the protection needed for life. And we see it in Yaakov. Yaakov needed 14 years of education and he got protected. Yosef also got 14 years of education and he also got protected. And the truth is, what protects us? We're saying the word education. But what I really mean is Torah. The Torah is what's protecting us. Spiritual protection is our real protection. You know, Hanukkah, a few days away, what was, the, what was the whole thing in Hanukkah? Spiritual warfare. They wanted our neshama. They wanted the Jewish neshama. It was Hellenism versus Judaism. It's everyday mundane versus spirituality and lofty thinking and connecting to something holy like God. What protected us? One family that said no. Holiness, God, Neshama, Torah. One family stood up for that, for a Jew wanting to be a Jew, and Hashem won the entire war for us. You know, the, there's a big political conversation in Israel about the yeshiva boy. Should they go to, to, to the army? Shouldn't they go to the army? Uh, you know, on a Torah level, they're the real soldiers. On a Torah level, they're the ones that when they're opening up the book, now, again, take it, for, take it for granted what I'm saying, it's a real Torah Jew. He wakes up in the morning, he goes, he studies 10 hours and he goes home. I'm not talking about all the ones in between this and that. Hashem we're not talking about that. We're talking about the yeshiva boys, that they are the real protection of Am Yisrael. How do we know that? What does Bereshit say? Bereshit says, Elohim barayat ha-shamayim ve'et ha-aretz. And God created first the heavens, then He created earth. In other words, first it's there, then it's here. So what are the yeshivas boys doing? They're taking care of the war upstairs. If they win, things are good for Israel. If they are losing, we're losing over here. People that are not in the Torah life miss that point. They miss that understanding that they're really fighting first for us. But that's the Yetzirah. It's got us thinking backwards. But with it, every time that we are, you know what we're doing right now? We're fighting a war. We're saving a bomb in Israel. We're saving a bullet in a Jew right now. Believe that. 
Right now, there's some, some Jews that hold a, 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 a gun and, and a bulletproof vest to protect Jews. We're right now sitting here, we're protecting Jews too. Just by us learning here, we're like, we, protect, we did something. Maybe one knife uh, stabbing won't happen because of what we're doing here. This is spiritual protection. And unless, it, unless a Jew doesn't get stabbed up in the Shemaim, he doesn't get stabbed on, the, on earth. And when you have the protection of the Torah, common sense, laws of nature and sensibility don't apply. Case proven, Hanukkah. How is it possible that one family beats the entire continent? Doesn't make sense. What protected them? The Torah. Divine protection. Just like in Hanukkah, just like in Siat Mitzrayim, and just like in the coming of Mashiach. Is that the shame that you have a great rest of the week? Hashem Zarechatchem, Isanah.